Hi, and welcome to this walkthrough of a level of response to transition methods question. It's taken from question 17b from the October 2021 paper from OCR Chemistry A, and it's the periodic table elements in physical chemistry. So we're going to look first at how to read and process the question, because there's quite a lot of information you need to try and assimilate. So let's have a think about the instructions at the bottom. You've actually got three different things you've got to cope with. So it's worth considering splitting your answer into three sections to allow you to process these one at a time. So let's look at the top part first of all. It gives you some uh, percentages by mass. So that allows us to work out an empirical formula by dividing each percentage by the relative atomic mass of the element concerned. The presence of hydrogen and oxygen relates to the fact that it's hydrated. So it will take the form of XH2O in the formula. And we know that the solution contains chromium in the form Cr3+. Now, when do they tell us that crh 6 is 3 plus? But they also say that it's chromium 3 salt, so it's only plus the oxidation state. You can check this if you wish against the 608.3 grams per mole minus 1 uh, when we worked out the formula. Okay, so let's have a look at the next part where it gives us aqueous sodium in the right, Na2C2 or 4 and it gives us the structure of that particular ion as well. And you can see that there's two places where there's long pairs, so therefore it's going to be a bidentate ligand. And once we've done that part, we can do the, the following parts, the ionic equation, and the 3D structure is quite straightforwardly. So let's have a quite a quick look at where to start. So if we, like we said, uh, put in three sections, and we start with the uh, empirical formula, dividing the percentage by the relative atomic mass, that gives you this ratio. And you divide through by the smallest to give you this. So the problem is we've got sulfur still as 1.5. So it's quite easy to deal with this. You multiply it by 2 to get rid of that. And that gives you Cr2H24O24 plus 3. Now from this we can take into account the fact there has to be a water crystallization part of the formula. So the most number of water the crystallization you can get is based on 24 hydrogens, so therefore 12 H2Os. That leaves us with cr 2 s 312 So therefore the anion that would represent s 312 could be um, three sulfate ions, so SO4 2 minus multiplied three times. That gives us A as cr 2 so 4 3 12 h 20 So the next part is to construct the ionic equation. So thinking about this, we know that uh, cr 2 so 4 3 H2O could also be written as CO2SO43 and then H2O6, just leaving out the 12 H2O for now. We're just interested in the anhydrous part of that, that um, salt. So the sulfate ions are not involved in the heat leaving substitution here because it says that it's the ethane diorate that does the substituting, not the sulfate. It also says that the water is substituted, not the sulfate. So we can treat sulfate as spectator ions and easily cancel either side. We're just going to CrH2O6, so we're representing the Cr3 plus as the hexa aqua ion here. That's our starting complex, and uh, we can think now about what's going to be substituted to what might go into the equation. So that allows us to substitute two C2O4s for four waters and write an equation out like that. And the next thing to do is the 3D stereoisomers. I've located a picture online and borrowed it for this video. So the reasoning here is that the stereoisomers could be based on that idea. With two cis stereoisomers, I haven't shown here, the cis stereoisomers will have the two ethylene diorate ligands um, at 90 degrees to one another, and then they'd be arranged in uh, two optical isomers, the mirror images, and then the third stereoisomer would be the trans uh, that's shown in the picture here. So let's clear some space and put those in. So we've got three versions here. At the bottom we have this trans isomer that we had from the picture online. And then at the top we've got the two stereo isomers. Uh, there are cis versions and there are also optical isomers. Okay, thanks for listening. Until next time, see you soon.